So my friends, get a load of this. We hope you love it like we do. I'll see you on the other side. I first started playing Overwatch in 2021, when a good friend of mine bought me the game and wanted to play it with me. Prior to that, my only real exposure to the game was a couple of really entertaining YouTube videos and a few games played on my friend's PS4 in middle school. Despite both of these experiences with Overwatch being pretty positive, my well had unfortunately been poisoned already, long before I ever picked my first hero. You see, I had been brought up a Team Fortress 2 player, watching the likes of Soundsmith and Uncle Dane for most of my adolescent life. I finally picked up the game seriously when I got my first real desktop computer for Christmas in 2019. Of course, lockdown went into effect shortly afterwards, so TF2 was the go-to game I used to relieve the immense stress brought on by hours upon hours stuck in my house. This background meant I had basically no interest in playing Overwatch, as I had already been informed of the game's many, many shortcomings prior to ever playing it myself. Restricting movement in a shooter built so heavily on movement is always bound to be unfun. Whoa, what's this picture of Overwatch doing on screen? I never wanted to play Overwatch, but my friend did, and I valued the time I spent with them more than my poor impressions of a video game. So, begrudgingly, I sat down, made a Battle.net account, and played Overwatch for the first time ever. And I loved it. Of course, a lot of the issues with the game that I had heard told to me around the internet were absolutely correct. The dumbing down of TF2's stolen mechanics, the haphazard approach to balancing, it was all there. Not to mention, Blizzard's management of the game had already begun to take a nosedive long before Overwatch 2 ever actually released. But aside from all of that, there was certainly a lot to say about Overwatch's focus on teamwork and camaraderie. I got to play and enjoy the game with friends, and the strengths of Overwatch were fully realized when I could communicate and coordinate with the other people on my team. It didn't take long before I found a character that I declared my main, a support character based off of one of my all-time favorite game series. My Overwatch hero of choice was Lucio. This video is not about how good Lucio is in a competitive setting. Most players would agree that he's consistently one of the absolute best support heroes in Overwatch. No matter the game, patch, or version, Lucio has almost always been a strong pick in the vast majority of situations. He's a viable hero, and actually fairly well constructed as far as Overwatch goes. However, the issue that I have with Lucio lies in the playstyle incentivized by the game itself, and the lack of variation and depth found in said playstyle. To set some foundation, let's speed through Lucio's attributes, starting with his most impactful, the Crossfade. Lucio's Crossfade is his bread and butter. It allows him the ability to passively buff nearby teammates who are in his radius at all times. He's a moving Minecraft beacon, constantly contributing to his team's success as long as he's both alive and nearby. The nature of this buff is based upon what music track Lucio has selected. The calmer of the two tracks is the Healing Boost, which heals all surrounding teammates as well as Lucio himself. This is an incredibly helpful ability, as constant health regeneration is an invaluable asset to any team. However, Lucio also has a second, more upbeat track, his speed boost. This buffs the movement speed of Lucio and his nearby allies by 25%. The most common and consistently effective way to utilize this is in reaching the objective as quickly as possible, or pushing Lucio's teammates forward to capitalize on some gained momentum. Most competitive players will denote Lucio's speed boost as the reason for his high pick rate in ranked matches. For proof of that statement, here's literally the first 5 seconds of this video by CarQ. Lucio is one of the top hero choices because of his survivability and of course his speed boost. This mode allows for Lucio to constantly maintain the fastest movement of any hero in the game, especially so when combined with his wall right ability. Being able to quickly jump from wall to wall makes getting to any portion of the map a breeze, and turns any building or structure into a parkour playground. There's also a decently high skill ceiling with how the mechanic can be used, since well-timed jumps on the ground result in Lucio maintaining his momentum when there's no more walls to jump on. It's an ability that has a lot of skill expression in how it's utilized, something that's often sorely lacking in much of Overwatch's character design. Let's get scratching. Lucio is also equipped with a sonic amplifier, a semi-automatic projectile weapon that shoots rounds of pre-engineered sound at enemies. 
Despite being canonically a famous DJ, his music does 20 damage to any opponent it comes into contact with, doing double damage if it hits the head. The music Lucio is making must not be that good. Each shot contains 4 rounds, doing a combined 80 damage if all 4 rounds connect, or 160 damage if they all connect at the head. This will almost never happen in the heat of battle, however, due to the weapon's incredibly slow projectile speed, with each round moving at a staggeringly slow 50 meters per second. For context, Kiriko's kunais go 90 meters per second, and Ana's unscoped shots go 125 meters per second. This slow projectile speed means that hitting opponents consistently is very difficult, especially so in the head. So beginner and novice Lucios will often just tape down their left mouse button for most of the match, firing into the enemy team in hopes of doing some chip damage. It's helpful, I suppose, but not much in the way of consistent offensive output. However, he's a support, so we can chalk his poor offensive capability up to his role label. Supports aren't supposed to do much damage. Except, of course, for, uh, when they do. And this leads to the problem I have with Lucio. The way he was intended to be played the way you're supposed to play him, doesn't have much variation or depth in how it's executed. When a player is presented with a set of tools, in the form of a character, the game is setting the player up for an incredibly cathartic gaming experience, one that's been pioneered by many games before. There's an immense amount of satisfaction naturally woven within the process of finding different unique ways to utilize a character's attributes. As the player grows more and more comfortable with their character, they grow attached to them. Suddenly it's not just about who you play, but how you play. For example, in Ultra Kill there's the infamous Marksman Revolver. It works very simply. You flick coins into the air, and then you can shoot off those coins into enemies for more damage and style points. Despite how simple this concept is, the usage of the revolver is incredibly diverse. If a player is focused on speed, they might attempt to perfect quickly flicking to the coin immediately after it's fired, trying to maximize the amount of shots they can fire in the shortest amount of time. On the other hand, another player could be focused on achieving the highest possible damage output on a single shot, firing multiple coins into the air and having the bullet ricochet off all of them to achieve the maximum amount of single target damage. This is a well-designed playstyle with a lot of mechanical depth. Every natural option this weapon presents the player is usable and effective in allowing them to win. A player can insert a piece of themselves and their identity into how they interact with the mechanics the game is presenting. Using this lens, let's look at Lucio. Players who pick him are granted the fastest base movement speed in the entire game, along with the most effective base multi-target healing in the game. On top of that, you can switch between the two modes at will. The common response most players will have is to use the healing mode when Lucio's surrounding team is on the defensive, and the speed mode when Lucio's team is already succeeding offensively. This is how the vast majority of Lucio players play the character, even if they don't consciously understand it that way. This is because it's the method that makes the most sense. But therein lies the problem. Unlike the Marksman Revolver, that's really where Lucio's experimentation and discovery ends. Most people who play Lucio will all come to the same conclusion, because that's how the developers intended for the character to be played. That would be fine if there was a lot of mechanical depth involved in that one path, but for Lucio, the most mechanically dense part of him is something that he doesn't get to use nearly as much as you think he would. Lucio's ability to wall ride is one of his most invaluable and useful tools, but the ways it can be utilized are very different from the ways it should be utilized. Basically every Lucio guide you can find will tell you to avoid playing like a quote unquote Reddit Lucio. God, you're trash, you freaking stupid little, oh, little, little, little Reddit Lucio, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop around and shit, I'm so good, look at me. Oh, what this means is that a good Lucio shouldn't go out of his way to find kills or flank enemies because that's not the way he's most helpful to his team. Though this statement is true, the unfortunate result of it is that a wide variety of Lucio's coolest maneuvers will go completely unused in the average Overwatch game. Paradoxically, this means that one of Lucio's most important and widely used mechanics is still underutilized in his current gameplay. That's not to say that no one has been able to make a more flank-heavy playstyle work for Lucio. Most notably, YouTuber and Top 100 Lucio Frogger has made an entire career off of what he's coined DPS Lucio, an alternative style of play that turns Lucio into a much more offensively minded hero who acts more mobile and independent. However, the skill and understanding required to break out of the box that Blizzard has shoved Lucio into is absolutely insane, especially so in comparison to the relatively low amount of effort required to find success with his base playstyle. For most, the detriment caused to the team and the high skill floor make playing DPS Lucio too daunting a task. Most will simply stick to standing near their team, boosting their health when they're low, and boosting their speed when they're pushing or contesting. 
and that leads to every Lucio feeling the exact same. This isn't a problem that's exclusive to Lucio either. Basically every single character in Overwatch is designed this way. Whether it's Farah, Wrecking Ball, Reaper, Bastion, Reinhardt, or any other Overwatch hero, there's really only two options. There's the intended and helpful way to play them, and then everything else. If you want to be a Mercy who exclusively damage boosts their team and uses their gun more often, focusing on offensively empowering their team rather than healing them, you're probably going to lose because of how valuable your single target healing is. It's just too valuable to leave behind. That's not what you're supposed to do, and so you can't without significantly damaging your team. If you want to play Widowmaker as a frontline quickscoping sniper, then prepare to die over and over again because that's not where she's supposed to go. Most of these characters aren't even as fortunate as Lucio is. At least Lucio has the ability to do something different, even if it's incredibly difficult and sometimes hurtful to his team. Many of these characters don't even have that. Playing Ana feels like the game is on autopilot half the time, just cycling between healing my team when they're low on health and shooting the enemy the rest of the time, sleeping ults when they happen, trying to keep the other team from being healed with my grenade. I don't feel like I'm really improving on anything other than my aim, positioning, and ability use, skills that I'm improving on regardless of what character I pick. I'm not saying that every character should have an insane amount of alternative playstyles that are just as viable as their meta, but there should certainly be an amount of diversity when it comes to the nuances of how each person plays their character. And yet, Overwatch's characters are all locked into their individual boxes so strictly that it's hard to really feel like you've earned a certain amount of skill with each individual character. After playing this game for dozens of hours over the course of two years, I don't feel like I've really gotten all that better at Lucio individually. More that I've gotten better at Overwatch, like the whole game. The ebb and flow of each push, how to maximize my role on attack versus defense, all skills that can apply to every single character. That improvement is certainly engaging, but individually, as a Lucio, I don't feel like my practice has really been rewarded all that much. When an opposing Lucio does better than I do, I have no idea what they were doing better or worse to give them the edge. All our game tapes look more or less the same. We're both playing the same songs, utilizing the same notes, with the same four chords, unable to play a tune that differentiates us from each other. Everyone talks about the issues Overwatch 2 has with its poor management, inconsistent balance, and anti-consumer business practices. All of those issues are awful, and have certainly taken their toll on Overwatch's decline in success. However, if TF2 and Super Smash Bros. are anything to go by, bad management, bad balance, and bad business don't prevent an audience from enjoying a game casually. No, I attribute Overwatch's decline in large part due to the lack of depth and variety found within its characters. It's incredibly difficult to feel like investing hours of my time into an individual hero when the extent of their skill expression is so shallow. And that has cut into Overwatch's staying power consistently. Hero after hero getting added haphazardly with no sense of direction or stability, only to get repatched and reworked later. After a while, the average player just feels overwhelmed and quits. Many people tout Lucio as Overwatch's best designed character, one of the few heroes that's actually designed in a way that allows for mechanical depth. But what good is that depth when there's no diversity found within it? Everyone's playing the same song, the same way, with the same technique. A monotonous droning of safe, predictable music designed to appeal to everyone around him. Maybe one day he'll finally be able to let his creativity free, being allowed to play at a tempo that's always been more his speed.